Now, a lovely old English tune to introduce a little English history from Dame Peggy Ashcroft. Jane Austen's History of England, aged 15. Some kings and queens by a partial, prejudiced, and ignorant historian. Henry VI. I cannot say much for this monarch's sense, nor would I if I could, for he was a Lancastrian. I suppose you know all about the Wars of the Roses between him and the Duke of York, who was of the right side. If you do not, you had better read some other history, for in this, I mean only to vent my spleen against and show my hatred to all those people whose parties and principles do not agree with mine <laughs> and not to give information. It was in this reign that Joan of Arc lived and made such a row among the English. They should not have burned her, but they did. Edward IV, this monarch was famous only for his beauty and his courage, of which the picture we have of him and his undaunted behavior in marrying one woman while he was engaged to another are sufficient proofs. Edward V, this unfortunate prince lived so little a while that nobody had time to draw his picture. He was murdered by his uncle's contrivance whose name was Richard III. The character of this prince has in general been very severely handled by historians, but as he was a York, I am rather inclined to suppose him a very respectable man. It has indeed been confidently asserted that he killed his two nephews and his wife, but it has also been declared that he did not kill his two nephews which I am inclined to believe true. Whether innocent or guilty, he did not reign long in peace, for Henry Tudor, Earl of Richmond, as great a villain as ever lived, made a great fuss about getting the crown, and having killed the king at the Battle of Bosworth, he succeeded to it. This monarch had two sons and two daughters, the elder of which daughters was married to the King of Scotland and had the happiness of being the grandmother of Mary Stuart, one of the first characters in the world. His Majesty died and was succeeded by his son, Henry, whose only merit was in his not being quite so bad as his daughter, Elizabeth. <laughs> Henry VIII, the crimes and cruelties of this prince were too numerous to be mentioned and nothing can be said in his vindication but that his abolishing religious houses and leaving them to the ruinous depredations of time has been of infinite use to the landscape of England in general. <laughs> Mary Tudor. I cannot pity the kingdom for the misfortunes they experienced during her reign since they fully deserved them for having allowed her to succeed her brother, which was a double piece of folly, since they might have foreseen that as she died without children, she would be succeeded by that disgrace to humanity, that pest of society, Elizabeth. <laughs> it was the peculiar misfortune of this woman to have bad ministers. I know that it has been asserted and believed that Lord Burley, Sir Francis Walsingham, and the rest were deserving, experienced, and able ministers. But oh, how blinded such writers and such readers must be to true merit when they reflect that these men, these boasted men, were such scandals to their country and to their sex as to allow and assist their queen in confining for the space of 19 years a woman who had every reason to expect assistance and protection, and at length allowed Elizabeth 
to bring this amiable woman to an untimely, unmerited, and scandalous death. She was executed in the great hall at Fotheringay Castle, sacred place, on Wednesday, the 8th of February, 1586, to the everlasting reproach of Elizabeth, her ministers, and of England in general. Charles I, the events of this monarch's reign were too numerous for my pen, and indeed the recital of any events is uninteresting to me. My principal reason for undertaking the history of England being to prove the innocence of the Queen of Scotland, which I think I have effectually done. Jane Austen's view of English history, written at the age of 15, read by one of our finest actresses, Dame Peggy Ashcroft.